Hello everyone, my name is Jimmy and welcome to The Last Lap. In today's video we're going to be talking about a lot of penalties that were overturned, penalties that were handed out, a lot of stuff. But before we hop into the video, I just want to remind you guys to hit that like button and subscribe button. We'd greatly appreciate it if you did that. And you can also check out our social media pages which are linked in the description down below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the video. As always, I have my friend and co-host Matthew joining me on the show. And we're recording this Friday night, so tonight I'll be doing my iRacing League. And then Sunday, him and I are both going to go up to Richmond and watch the race. So Matthew has a feel to be approaching race weekend where we'll be able to hopefully go see our first race of 2023. Well, I'm waiting for this weekend. Um, it's going to be the first time with the Cup Series with this new uh, short track aero package. So I'm looking forward to see what the differences are compared to last year, which will make things a little bit more interesting. And yeah, I'm ready to be back at the racetrack again. So it's going to be a fun weekend here. All right. Well, before we get to Richmond, we do have a lot to unpack. First of all, at Coda, Daniel Suarez, he ran into Ross Chastain and Alex Bowman on pit road after the race. NASCAR decided to fine him $50,000 for doing so. No points penalty. Um, just for reference for last year, uh, Ty Gibbs, he was fined $15,000 for doing something similar in the Xfinity Series race after the first Martinsville race last year. And then he was also fined $75,000 more and docked 25 points for what he did at Texas. Uh, he hit Ty Gillen, Ty Gillen, wow, Ty Dillon on pit road and like under caution. He just like sideswiped him during the middle of the race. And I, like the reason they upped the fine and the reason they probably deducted points is because that was the second time he did something last year. And then uh, William Byron last year, he was docked points. But what they ended up doing is they ended up taking the points away and adding more money to the fine. So, I mean, I guess in NASCAR's perspective, I guess this is a fair penalty compared to what they did last year. But in my opinion, if you're bumping somebody on pit road after the race like that, I think there should be some type of points involved. Because you cannot just be slamming into people on pit road after the race or at all, I guess, just because there's people all around. And, yeah, I think there needs to be some type of points penalty around something like this happening on the track. If you do it on a track, you know, whatever, fine. That's okay. Well, you know, to a certain extent. But if you're doing that kind of stuff on pit road, I just don't think it's safe. So I think in the future, NASCAR needs to put a points penalty towards this and keep it like that, you know, for future reference. But I guess for, like, this instant base. This instance, based on what happened last year, I guess this is somewhat fair, but I would like to see points added in the future for similar incidents. And the big news of the week is Hendrick Motorsports, their appeal for the Louvers was overturned, partially overturned. So what happened was all 100 points, driver points, and then 10 playoff points were restored to each driver and owner. Originally, those all those points were deducted. Uh, driver and owner points, but now they're all restored. And I have a tweet from Bob Pockers that I'm going to read. Two, actually. Uh, the first one is NASCAR's statement on the appeals panel. And it says that, quote, We are pleased that the National Motorsports Appeal Panel agreed that Hendrick Motorsports violated the rulebook. However, we are disappointed that the entirety of the penalty was not upheld. A points penalty is a strong deterrent that is necessary to govern the garage following rulebook violations and we believe that it was an important part of the penalty in this case and moving forward we will continue to inspect and officiate the nascar garage at the highest level of scrutiny to ensure a fair and level playing field for our fans in the entire garage so that was nascar's response and the main thing i want to pick out of this is it says we are disappointed that the entirety of the penalty was not upheld and the other thing I want to suggest or point out is that uh, the appeals panel agreed that Hendrick Motorsports violated the rulebook. So the appeals panel agreed that Hendrick Motorsports violated the rulebook, but they only took away some of the penalty. They didn't enforce the full penalty. So in my opinion, if Hendrick Motorsports violated the rulebook, I think that the penalty that NASCAR suggested should be upheld. 
but I think so this is all very frustrating because we don't have a definite answer on why this was only partially upheld. Like the appeals panel didn't give like a statement saying, oh, you know, the appeal was only partially upheld because blah, blah, blah. But a lot of speculation is because uh, the hood lures were not used in the race. They were discovered to be faulty during practice or before or after practice. And, you know, I guess Hendrick, one of their main arguments was that, uh, they weren't used in the race so maybe that's the reason why this was partially enforced i'm not sure but yeah it, it, i just it's so tough because we don't have a definitive answer on what happened and what was specifically said um and also the fines for the and the crew chief's suspension they're still in place so the hendrick motorsports cars will be without their crew chiefs for two more races and then they still have to pay the four hundred thousand four hundred thousand dollars across all four teams so i don't really know what to think of this i think if you break the rules then you still suffer the same consequences but yeah it's just so tough to say what happened because we don't know um but if this penalty was partially overturned i honestly think the colleague appeal that'll be completely I think that should be completely overturned because that's only one louver on the hood. But that penalty is Wednesday. And then Denny Hamlin, his appeal is the day after that. And I wouldn't be surprised if Denny gets uh, some money back for that. But yeah, I, I think NASCAR is in a really tough place right now with all these appeals. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the colleague and Denny Hamlin one next week. But yeah, it's just tough to give my opinion because like I said we don't know what happened we don't know what was it happening inside the courtroom or whatever kind of room it was but Matthew we have to say about these penalties that were announced and partially overturned this week before I get into the whole Hendrick situation which I've been looking forward to talk to ever since this news dropped um First, we have to get to uh, Suarez's situation here. I think this was absolutely deserving. Um, you can't do that. You can't do what he did, you know, bumping, using your car as a weapon on pit road or after the race. Um, they've been very consistent with that, especially like Ty Gibbs last year. Twice, actually. And, yeah, they, I think uh, it was the right call. But I think the it should be a points penalty with it as well because, listen, man, a, a, a fine like that, yeah, to us, that's a lot of money. But to these drivers, that's like pocket change for them. I mean, that's not sending them a message, in my opinion. What you're going to send a message is when you start taking points away. And I believe that's what it should have been. It should have been money and points. Because, I mean, depending on what Jar we're talking about here, you just take away the money. That's like pocket change. They're not going to learn their lesson. If you take points away, then yeah, they're like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Because that actually affects your whole team. It affects your season. It could matter like in the postseason if you miss out by a point, which you could have had that point if you didn't do that. So... In my opinion, yeah, they made the absolute right call, but in my opinion, for future instances, it should be a points penalty with it as well because that is a dangerous thing, what he did, especially on pit road after the race when there's people on pit road or walking onto pit road. So I think it needs to be a little bit more harsh than it already is. Now, let's get to the whole Hendrick situation. I am absolutely disgusted by what I saw. Um, I just, I got no words. I mean, legit, I was, you know what's even crazier? Is that I was not surprised at all. I had a feeling when they said they were going to appeal this penalty, I'm like, they're going to they're gonna get this overturned somehow. I already know it. I already know it. Because if you remember last year, we have a certain situation that happened in Texas when William Byron basically dumped Denny Hamlin under caution, by the way, in which we've seen instances like that in the past, and we've seen those drivers who have done it in the past get suspended. 
Now, they didn't sus suspend Byron in this one, which, I mean, I didn't really have a too strong a preference for that. But they gave him a fine and points penalty in the playoffs, which, in my opinion, I thought that was the absolute right call. Then they went to the appeals. And guess what? They got all their points back. I mean, they, he basically got away with a slap on the wrist. And with this whole Louver thing, I'm like, this is going to happen again, isn't it? And what do you know? It did. And that is absolutely disgraceful. This appeals panel is extremely flawed. We have seen the appeals panel now be way too, you know, relaxed on these penalties. They're basically saying, yeah, he did, they actually did get called cheating. Oh, he actually did, you know, wreck that person on purpose. Or, oh, he actually did say he purposely wrecked the guy. Uh, and yeah. But we're just going to take, we're going to give them the points back anyway. They, they're good. They're good. Are you serious? <laughs> You are basically giving teams now, a, like, the confidence of, hey, you know, we can push the boundaries if we wanted to. We'll get penalized, yeah, but we, all we have to do is appeal and they'll give us a points back. It is absolutely unbelievable. And, I mean, I, it's, you know, I guess, you know, when... You got to listen to your fan base, which buys, which um, a lot of them are those Hendrick fans. I guess you got to stick on their side because they're the ones that lead your merchandise sales and lead your TV ratings. So you got to find the ways to uh, make them happy as possible, which is a shame. Um, I'll be looking forward to this calling ruling next week. If they don't, if they don't, you know, give him his points back, they leave it how it is. Then is 100% sure that they're just, you know, keep having their lovey-dovey eyes on Hendrick Motorsports. If they don't appeal to, uh, if they don't give Colin Grace and their points back, just the same way they did with Hendrick, that's, you're, you're going to be hearing from me next week. Um, but, well, yeah, it's just an uh, absolute shame. Um, I mean... I'm not even going to buy on NASCAR's statement there. I know secretly they're actually were clapping in there like, yay, our favorite team just got their points back. Yay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not buying their statement at all. I know they secretly wanted them to be back in the, the points lead or all their cars back in the playoffs, basically. Um, but, yeah, what an absolute disgrace. Um they need to fix that appeals panel and fast because I know they have different people doing the appeals panel, but apparently the people that begin doing these appeals, they're way too relaxed or they're just secretly Hendra fans, but we'll, we'll slide that by. But yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, I'm not, <clears throat> not surprised at all that you threw, you know, a couple jabs at Hendrick Motorsports and, you know, the most popular team and all that kind of stuff. I kind of expect that out of you, not going to lie. But, yeah, I just... Oh, it's everywhere on the internet. It's not just me. You've seen it. Um, I know you've seen the memes. Oh, I've I've seen them because you've sent them to me. That's, that's <laughs> how I've seen them. Um, but, yeah, I just wish that... I don't, I don't even know if there should be an appeals panel, honestly, because I feel like NASCAR should just be able to take control of the situation and if they see a penalty they should be able to assign it and you know i don't know i feel like it should be between nascar and the drivers but i guess the appeals panel thrown in there is kind of like a non-biased side non -bi I'll, I'll, I'll even do it in the quotes for you matthew non-biased side and they're just kind of supposed to like mediate between the two and pick you know whoever's right or anything like that but um, yeah, I just wish that we would know why it got overturned because there's, you know, Hendrick Motorsports, their main argument is that they needed to adjust the louvers so that they would fit the car. And they also argued that the change was made prior, they didn't race with the changes on the hood louvers either. But 
I don't know. I guess we'll never know why the appeal got overturned. But anyways, we're going to move on to the schedule for Richmond and Texas because the trucks are in Texas this weekend. Um, on Friday, there's nothing on Friday that I see. Uh, so on Saturday, Xfinity practice is very early in the morning, 8 a.m. Friday, Saturday morning. And then cup practice and qualifying is right after that at 10. Uh, truck practice and qualifying is at 10.35. The Xfinity race is at 1 at Richmond. And the truck race is at 4.30 at Texas all on Saturday. Then the cup race will be at 3.30 on Sunday. So that's the schedule for the upcoming race weekend. Like I said before, we will be in Richmond for the Cup Series race. Very excited to do that. Uh, we'll hopefully, you know, go to Bob Pockers' tweet-up stuff. And uh, I have a secret spot that I like to hang out around and maybe get some pictures with some drivers. So hopefully that all comes through, all goes to plan. But Cup Series, drivers to watch this weekend. I think you have to keep an eye on the Toyotas. This is pretty much their racetrack. I mean, this race is called the Toyota Owners 400, and... Rightfully so, I guess, because Toyota owns this racetrack. You have to look out for Denny Hamlin. I would say he's probably the favorite. Uh, Gotta watch out for Martin Truex Jr. I know he hasn't ran too well with the next-gen car, but he did win at the Clash. That is a short track, so I would expect Martin Truex Jr. to have some speed this weekend as well. Christopher Bell, he's usually pretty good at Richmond. And I would would even say watch Ty Gibbs. Maybe not for the win, but maybe... A top 10 finish for Ty Gibbs, I would predict, just because he's pretty good at Richmond, too, and he's a JGR car. Um, I also have to throw William Byron in there, just because he has been pretty strong all season long, no matter what track it seems we go to. He seems to be fast. He won, uh, or he was fast at Phoenix. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you have to watch William Byron, too. He's been fast just about everywhere. So those are a few drivers that I'm going to be watching this weekend that will probably be in my fantasy lineup. But, Matthew, who are some drivers you're going to be watching this weekend at Richmond? Man, you're, you're just going to forget the guy that has won six times at Richmond? You're just going to leave him to me? Okay. I'm going I got to go with the six-time Richmond winner, man. Of course, KFB himself. Now, he's going to be in an RCR car this time. This will be a real test to see if Dick Kyle Busch bring a lot of that Richmond knowledge to RCR that, and see if that team is any better there now. Uh, but I'm going to keep my eye on him still because he still has won there six times despite all those being in the Toyota. So even though when he was with Hendrick Motorsports, I've seen him run. I'll be, I saw him, you know, um, be close to the win when he was with Hendrick, but we'll see how he does with the RCR car at Richmond. Um, I'll keep an eye on Alex Bowman as well. He has been pretty much Mr. Consistent this season, which is shocking because it seems like the past years he's always been the inconsistent driver, but so far he has been consistent. Good for him. And he also did win at Richmond in 2021, so... Keep my eye on Alex Bowman. And let's see. Keep, I'm going to keep my eye on Kevin Harvick as well, who, had, who won there just last year. Um, he has been pretty much the guy that's carried SHR on his back. He literally should have won at Phoenix if it wasn't for Harrison Burns spinning. So keep my eye on Harvick as well. Yeah, those are all some good drivers to watch out for. It's definitely going to be interesting to see if Kyle Busch's success at Richmond is a more Toyota-based thing or a more Kyle Busch-based thing. So it'll be interesting to see how much he's able to, how much information he's able to bring over to RCR and see if that'll be able to help them as well. But it's going to be a fun weekend. We're very excited. But Matthew, before we close the video out, do you have any other closing thoughts? Man, that, that, that whole Hendrick thing just grinds my gears, man. And all these fools on the internet, or Hendrick fans, as usual, they're going to start saying, but, oh, but, but, it's a, it, it was before the race. It was during, after practice. They didn't mean to, I'll oh, oh, stop it. They ran out of practice. They know what they were doing. That's, they were just... Unfortunate for them that NASCAR actually, you know, so actually had a pair of glasses on. Like, wait a second, because they could have easily missed that and actually ran the race, and they probably would have failed. Po- William Byron probably would have failed post race, 
if they didn't see that there. So just because they got removed before the race doesn't eliminate the fact that they tried to cheat. So yeah. Yeah, but on the other hand, like I do have to put a little bit of blame on NASCAR because I think the cars practiced first and then they found them before qualifying or after practice. So if NASCAR is supposed to do pre-race inspection before practice and they're supposed to go through all the cars, I don't know how they didn't see that the first time around and then tell Hendrick, okay, well, you guys failed pre-race inspection, go back and fix whatever you did and then come back. But I don't know. It's just a very sticky situation. Um yeah, I mean, like I said, two, three, four, or five times now, I just wish that we knew why all this happened, but we're probably never going to know. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you guys stay tuned to our channel. We're probably going to be doing a small little Richmond vlog for you guys, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But until the next time, we'll see you guys in our next video.